Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play by me, the Game Rule of Six of More Not To, the original, doing Koya's Route. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can go down to the link in the description where you can download and play this game for free. And with that, let's start. So in the last Let's Play, Koya asked us if we wanted to live with him for a little while, and we had a choice between yes, definitely, and oh my gosh, this is my dream, please don't wake up. And right now it seems like we're waiting. Tick, tick, tick. In my light sleeping, I heard a tiny noise. Maybe it was the second hand of a clock, and its intermittence made me open my eyes. Hmm? Opening my eyes, I was greeted by an unfamiliar room. My heart skipped a beat, but immediately afterwards, my memory came back. I'd always... That always, like, really jolts me when I'm in some place else. My violently pumping heart quickly calmed down. Oh yeah, staying over at Koya's place. Light leaking through the gap in the curtains illuminated the room. Based on this light, I must really, it must be really early, or it must be. When I looked to where the sound was coming from, a small hand was pointing down. 6.32. Compared to my usual... I woke up really early. I was wondering what I should do since I was awake, but if I get up, I'd most likely wake up Koya too. Since I'm not that stealthy, I just stayed in the futon. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. Still, since I'm not doing anything else, it's not that fun. Basically, I'm trying to kill time. It's comfortable. Just laying in bed, but not feeling sleepy at all. And it woke up so late yesterday, too. Well, instead of waking up, it's just more like I never went to sleep. I was in the futon just after midnight, and then after that I thought deeply. Koya. Koya, who ran away from home. As I thought about it, it wasn't a question of what just hap what had happened, but the topic kept spinning around in my head. Is it okay for me to stay here? All of a sudden, I became uneasy. When you run away from home, your parents can't exactly provide assistance. How does he make a living apart from his part-time work? Even I could tell it was tough without needing to think about it. It'd be great if I wasn't in the way. I was starting to hate how often I was thinking that lately. But if I go and say, I'm going back, Koya wouldn't, isn't going to say, oh, okay then, and let me go. On the contrary, it'd most likely hurt him. I want you to stay at my place, but only if you're okay with that. Or do you not like the idea? He went unusually far with that with that line. Also, if I thought that, I wouldn't be offering in the first place. What's more, that's more something Koya would say. Yeah, I'm sure of it. My eyes gaze over to Koya, who is beside my bed. I guess he turned over in his sleep, since his fearless face was pointed this way. I could easily see him rolling over on a spread out futon on the floor. Koya wanted me to take the bed, but as a freeloader, I thought it was too presumptuous for me to take the bed. Koya looked com comfortably asleep. Sound of his easy breathing reached me easily. I guess I'll stay another two days after all. I also want to be here if I could be anywhere. So I'll be here. When I look at Koya's face, somehow I feel a bit more determined. Just now, everything I was worrying over made me feel like an idiot. I really am an idiot. Worrying about weird things again. Koya would say something like that. Thinking about it like that, I laughed a little. Then Koya woke up, uh, woke up and opened his eyes. Why are you laughing at someone's sleeping face? 
He always spoke in a sleepy voice. I flattened a bit. I, I'm not. Then what are you laughing about? Um, it's because you're talking in your sleep, going, Stop. Not there. Don't touch that. Liar. He just made that up right now. Koya spoke over his shoulder as he sat up. Then he stretched his stretched once. Hmm. <sighs> you seem sleepy, Koya. Obviously. It's the first thing in the morning. But she still woke up surprisingly early. It's not even seven yet. Did I wake you up? I got up from my futon, then opened the curtains. The light that was originally peeking in now flooded the room. There's going to be good weather today. Well, no. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you something important. Eh? What? You have to stay here by yourself for a while, since I have to go to work from 9 to 3. Eh? Seriously? I'm really sorry. I'm getting a break tomorrow. Just because of that, I can't hang out today. Mm, well, I guess that's that. You do live alone, after all. Thanks for understanding. You can do as you like while I'm gone. I'll give you a spare key. If you're gonna go out, that's fine. Uh, oh? So, are you saying that it's okay for me to go through all your stuff and look through your dirty mag look for your dirty magazines? You could do that, but I don't know if you'll find anything. With his usual poker face, he passed by me. Tch. It would have been funny if he'd uh, gotten all flustered and said, "Stop." <laughs> then I really will do it. Before you do that, let's have breakfast. I can't take it easy just yet. Koya got out of bed and went to the kitchen. Hey, did you just ignore what I said? Well, that's fine. So, what's for breakfast? With the change in topic, I asked Koya as he started preparations. I think I have an idea of what it is, though. Hmm? It's kind of... I'm kind of re, re luck, uh, reluctant. I can't read. I don't know why I saw a C instead of an L about it since you're visiting, but the same as last night? Of course. Saying that, Koya began heating the pot of curry. Huh. Curry for breakfast. All right. I'm off. Okay. Do your best at work. Right. I saw Koya off from the doorway, just like a newlywed would. Koya slightly raised his hand in response to me, and afterwards, the only thing that was left was the sound of a door closing. And then I was alone. Okay, what should I do? Got the key from the house at breakfast. I could go out if I wanted to, but there really isn't any place I particularly want to go. I'll need to think about this. Frankly, there's nothing to do. Hmm. So I thought, so I should go looking for Koya's porn max. No, no, no. That would be bad. Hmm. I'll do some cleaning then. If something were to turn up, wouldn't that be an accident? I mean, yeah, but... Isn't that kind of sneaky? Besides, can I just waltz into his room? It's fine. He'd probably change the, the hiding place. Since he was cleaning in the panic yesterday. Also, isn't a one-room apartment? How do you walk into his room? Anyways, I could at least put things in order out of virtue. But, well... Now stop complaining. Right. I'll get to it. Out of virtue! Ugh. I slipped into a mental self conference self conference before I realized it. Please don't mind me. Anyhow, I'll start off with cleaning up. Mm. Since I found myself in a position to help Koya, I came across a good idea while thinking about other things. I'm not feeling guilty at all. Yep. Alright, let's do this. That should be done by noon. So I'll 
set out right now. Okay, I wonder if anything will turn up. N nothing's here. It can't be. Not that I was looking. However, nothing really popped out. Up until now, I spent nearly three hours cleaning. The clock has already struck noon. Thanks to that, I can see the area they're shining. It's positively sparkling. Shit. Nothing. Nothing's here. Impossible. I've waved a clenched fist as I insisted so. I mean, this is Koi's room, isn't it? Why didn't anything turn up? That's completely weird. The mediocrity is kind of irritating. Damn you, Koya! Just what kind of... At the moment, this morning conversation uh, crossed my mind. You could do that, but I don't know if you'll find anything. N no way. I don't know if I found anything. I was confident there would definitely be a hiding space, and I've been telling myself so. But could it be there was nothing to begin with? In that case, what have I been doing for the past few hours? I'll go eat. I unintentionally sighed, and then went towards the kitchen. But then, a familiar sound echoed through the room. Huh? The suddenness of it made me start. What did I do? The visitor coming? It was out of the line of my ex expectations. Is it okay for me to answer? No, but is it bad? Chime echoed again while I was thinking. If it's quick, that would be troubling. Oh yeah, I'm house-sitting at the moment. For now, it'd be okay to go look. I'm coming. And came to my conclusion and went for the door. Slowly opened the door. Yes, who is it? When I saw who it was, I forgot whatever it was I was about to say. Staring blankly, there's no way I could mistake who it was. Appearance hasn't changed at all, from the image in my memories. When I was in Minnesota, she took care of me a lot. Dark? Coon? Miss... It was Koya's mother, Kaz Kazumi-san. Oh, it's really you. It's been so long. You've gotten so big. Meeting someone from so long ago... I was just so su I'm just so surprised how long Yeah, I was just so surprised. How long will you be here? For all of August. Right now I'm on summer vacation. I see. Since it's been so long since you've been here, you must have missed so many things. Yes, definitely. Mm, I see. Kazum Kazumi san smiled and nodded at my words. But they only lasted a moment, before her expression changed to something complex. By the way, has Koya... gone out? Huh? Ah, yes. He's not here. He's at his job now. I'm house-sitting since I'm not paying him anything while I'm here. He'll be here. In a few hours or so. I see. Then, when he comes back... Will you give this to him? After saying that, Kazumi-san held out a brown envelope. Takoya was written neatly on it. Ah, yes, I understand. I'm sorry, Darkoon. Well, then, I'll be counting on you. Kazumi-san entrusted to the letter to me, then left. Completely flabbergasted, I stood uh, stock still in the front door... Uh, front of the entryway. The envelope was still in my hand. Okay, meat, veggie, fried, rice, ready. Hmm, no matter how many times I try it, you're really good at this. Just what do you expect from someone who lives alone? It's nothing to be praised about. Besides, you've only seen me cook twice. The number of times doesn't matter, for sure. Really? Uh, really, anyway, 
Take this over for me. Eh, over there for me. Yes, sir. I diligently brought over the portions to the table, just as Koya asked. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the clock had only just past six. It's a bit early, but we couldn't think of anything to do, so we decided to have dinner. Now then, let's eat before it gets cold. Hmm, time to eat. Yeah, let's eat. Still, to spend all day cleaning like that, I must have really been bored. Koi's height seemed to be saying, wouldn't it have been okay just to go somewhere? Well, there wasn't any place that I wanted to sp I especially wanted to go. So I thought cleaning up would be better. You went around searching for porno, didn't you? All of a sudden, Koi was prodding at me. My heart leapt into my throat. Hey, it's fried rice. It's awesomely delicious. Uh, so did you find my prized collection inside the magazines? Lies! I couldn't find it anywhere. Then you did go looking. Yeah, that's a horrible trick. Then don't fall for something like this. Koya was looking at me, completely aghast. I'm begging you, stop looking at me with those eyes. My god. Uh, I'm sorry. Whatever, just eat. Yeah, okay. Happy for the change in subject. I quickly finished up the rest of my food. Phew, thanks for the food. Today's meal was also very delicious. I said it earlier, there's nothing to be praised about. No, it's not that. Ah, I can handle uh, dealing with the dishes. I mean, let me handle them. You're being strangely helpful. You don't need to go so far out of your way. I know, but this is a problem with my feelings. Uh-huh, if you say so. I'll leave you to it then. Uh, to you then, yeah. I'll take care of it. After boasting, I stood up so I could take the dishes to the kitchen. It was then that something fell out of my pocket. Ah! It was an envelope. The thing that Kazumi-san had me hold on to. After Kazumi-san gave it to me, I put it in my pocket and left it there. It's not that I forgot about it, and I wasn't hiding it. It just, it was hard to give it to him. There wasn't a reason for it. I didn't even understand it myself. I simply never gave it to him. Hmm? What's that? It... Ah, sorry for taking so long to give it to you. During the day, I was asked to deliver it. Here. I handed the envelope over. Koya looked at it curiously as he turned it around. Who's it from? There's no sender written on it. Miss Kazumi. She hasn't changed a bit since back then. Koya's face turned into something a bit inscrutable. It was a mechanical, cold expression. I thought so, his face seemed to say. Koya, who should have left, who should have left home? And Kazumi-san, who came to visit. One way or another, Koya didn't seem too happy. It's possible that it's because it wasn't given to him earlier. Koya? He didn't answer and opened the envelope in silence. With a sudden movement, he opened the seal and checked inside. What fell out was a page of stationery. It was folded in three, which Koya opened and began reading quietly. It looks like it was written on all the way down to the bottom, but I couldn't read anything from where I stood. Koya kept going on in complete silence. Standing there felt somewhat awkward, so I took the dishes into the kitchen. The mood felt heavy, heavier than any leftovers on the plates. The, oppressive, so the oppressiveness kept weighing in for a while. I want to say something to Koya. However, I couldn't think of anything. I 
it seems like it could do anything. It was like my heart had put a clamp on the mouth. I carried on like that, feeling a bit pitiful. I got a little depressed. <sighs> Any tiny sigh came out as it turned the faucet. It was then I could hear the sound of a sound coming from the table. I looked over my shoulder. My eyes met with Koi as, as he stood up, fixing the edge of his shirt. I have to go shopping. The fridge is looking a bit empty. Oh. Okay, got it. I'll take care of things here. No. That's not what I wanted to say. I always choose the words that wouldn't, that wouldn't burden him. That wouldn't have become bothered to him. But it was useless. Right now, I can't do that. But, I, as I thought, the words wouldn't come out. Right. Without another word, he turned and left. The door closed with a thud. I was left alone for the sound of running water. When I remembered about the faucet, I turned that off and, fi and finally it was silent. What do I do? Again, another sigh. At this rate, maybe it'd be better to let him go. Uh, let's chase after him. Is it okay to let Koya go? No. There's no way it should be. But what can I say? What can I say to him? I don't know. I just don't know. Still, I can't let things go on like this. For now, I have to go after him. Right now, I can't leave Koya by himself. As for why, I thought about it. I want to be Koya's strength. I've always thought that. A minute later, I was walking out the door. While en route, I went and picked up the letter he rolled into the garbage, and the wallet he left on his bed. There was no such person who could go shopping and forget their wallet. I saw Koya's wallet when I was leaving the room. Someone going shopping wouldn't leave that behind. To do something like that, it was completely unlike Koya. I noticed it was just as I... I noticed it just as I was about to leave, something that shouldn't be overlooked. So why was it that it left behind? He wasn't planning on shopping to begin with. So where did Koya go then? I ran around the village looking for him. Not here. Not here either. So after searching in the village, I couldn't find him. There's pretty much nowhere left I haven't looked. Suddenly, the sunlight was dimming. Koya, where did... I stopped to catch my breath and calm down a little. No good. I didn't find anything running around at random. I'll have to think about it. If I were Koya, where would I go? Popular place is out of the question. Koya would want to be alone. That he left in silence should be proof of that. There's no way that can be it. If I think about it, like that, he probably didn't go any to anyone's house. So aside from all that, what kind of place would he go to? Oh. Maybe the forest? Probably not the lake, but I was thinking either the riverside or the forest. <sighs> Let's try the riverside. As I thought it over, I skimmed over all my memories. In a white, white space, I could see the form of one husky boy, sitting down with his legs spread out in front of him. He was looking off into the distance, not noticing me behind him. I slowly approached his back, then 
and clapped him on the shoulder. He turned around. The riverside? After coming back from a soundless, odorless, senseless vision, for some reason, it felt instinctual. I don't have any supporting evidence, but before I think about it further, I put my faith into that idea. It was darker than the city, but it ran through the evening. As I approached the stream, I had a thought that seemed to be telling me something. I'm over here. I began running as though I had actually been called. At the same time, I remembered more, bit by bit. When stuff happens, I usually come out here. That's what that boy said. He said that when he looks at the flowing water, it's somehow calming. On a hot summer days when he wanted to get nice and cool, that was always his favorite place from back then. I weaved my way through the paddy fields, and before long the river bank spread open in front of my eyes. The light of the night sky reflected off the river. I saw him sitting down, legs spread out in front of him. Poya was alone there. He wasn't doing anything beside aside from sitting there. It was as if he had stopped, as if time had stopped. But the sound of insects and the murmuring of the river told me it wasn't the case. I slowly approached. Standing there behind him, Koya's back somehow looked smaller than usual. Koya? From behind him, I spoke. At the sound of his name, Koya looked over his shoulder. Dark? What is it? How, how's the apartment? Koya replied back, looking the same as he ever did. As I answered, I sat down beside him. I just used the duplicate key since I had it. Someone went out shopping and forgot their wallet. Koya said nothing. Most likely, he knows what I was thinking in coming over here. And so, that thought is likely correct. If that's the case, there are things I need to say to him. Even if it's meddlesome, it's all okay. I've got things I want to say, and things I've thought about. And also, I've decided. I decided this morning, when I went at, when I was at Koya's, I decided I would tell him my feelings. Therefore, in determination my chest, I opened my mouth. Hey, Koya? What? This is just simple noiseness. You might hate it, but would you still listen? Koya shut his mouth again, so I kept on. I don't know what happened to you before, but I know that right now you're feeling, you're worrying, and that you're suffering. Koya, I don't worry about things by yourself. Don't worry about things by yourself. You aren't alone. You've got everyone right at your side. Konosuke, Shinkun, Shunkun, Koyuji, Tatsuni, Jayuchi san, Sotaro kun, and Torahaiko. And also, right now, I'm here. I'm not that reliable, but I'm sure I can at least be of a bit of strength to you. So, rely on me more. Don't hold back. We're friends, aren't we? I wasn't lying. Those were my true feelings. I want him to rely on me more. It's alright for him to count on me more. It's a little thing, but I thought I want to be Koya strength, like I was reaching out to him. Koya stayed quiet, just taking in my words. He seemed to be thinking about something. And now, I said nothing myself and silence ran between the two of us. Only the sound of water kept going. Before long, it was Koya who broke the silence. I'm an idiot. I was trying not to worry you, and I ended up doing the exact opposite. I really am a big idiot. 
Koya. Sorry, Dark. Looks like I made you worry too much. It's just as you said. If you came all the way here, it would have been better if I'd talked to you from the start. After saying that, Koya laughed sadly. I left home about the time I entered high school. I had a fight with my father. And then, little by little, he started talking. Things I didn't know about what happened in Minnesota when I wasn't around. I started playing the guitar during the last few years of grad school, or grade school. Since no one talks about it, I doubt you knew about that. I've always loved music since back then. I was interested in it. I thought I'd try sometime. Around then, it was still just a hobby, so I thought it would be fine just to enjoy it. But then, I started thinking, if I had the chance, I would want to be a musician. This was around summer, the first year of middle school. My motive wasn't anything special. It was just around that, then that I became acquainted with a street musician. You see them now again, Kazanari, but after seeing him so many times, I started stopping to listen to his song. Nobody else stopped, and I wonder why I was so captivated by the song. And then, one day, something happened. I was going there to listen to the song like always, and he called out to me. Hey, you there. Me? Yeah, you. I've been seeing your face around a lot lately. I can remember you since you were the only one to stop and listen. I guess you like my song then? No, to be honest, I don't really understand. Every time, my feet would just stop for some reason. To listen to your song, maybe? It's a strange way to put it, but it feels like it was calling me over. Hmm, I see. Like you were called, eh? Oh, sorry for laughing. It's just that that's the first time anyone said that. You're an interesting kid. Is that a compliment? Of course. So how about it? If you're okay with it, why don't you come over and talk with me again when you have time? I still don't know many people in this town. What do you think? I didn't have any special reason to say no. So, I accepted his invitation. And so, just as before, I'd sometimes go over to listen, and just to talk a little bit. Koya laughed shyly. I stayed quiet and waited for Koya to keep going. I'll listen to it all, I thought. But, he talked about a lot of things, without getting tired of it. And then, sometimes afterwards, I started thinking about one thing. It'd be great if I could get a lot of people to listen to my song, just like this guy. That's what I thought. It's because of that that I started aiming to be a musician. There's a chance that I've had it, that I've had that thought since I started playing on the guitar. But I'm sure the kickstart was because of him. I think it's a kind of yearning. Living like that is probably fun, I figured. If I could live with the one I love, I thought it'd be always fun. It'd always be fun. That's when I started taking the guitar seriously. I practiced hard, and occasionally, I played alongside next to that person. It quickly became a lot of fun, and met lots of friends and acquaintances. So, in the third year of middle school, I told my parents that when it was time, to decide a career, that I wanted to walk away, walk the way of the musician, but my dad, no, I'll never allow that. I said nothing when you wanted to play the guitar, but becoming a musician is ridiculous. Wait, I've been thinking about it a lot, and you understand nothing. Listen, you're free to have your own dreams, but you can't live on dreams alone. Boys like you aiming to be a musician are a dime a dozen. Take a closer look at reality. If you're going to keep saying that, you won't be able to stay while keeping 
up with the guitar. The hell? Are you saying for my sake to not listen to other people? Stop screwing with me. I have my own ideas. And then? Then we had an even bigger argument. Looking back on it, it was a stupid fight. It would have been better if I spoke more clearly. But I don't regret anything. I don't hate the way I am now, after all. If I never left home, I'm sure I'd never have turned out this way. As Koya said that, I could see a bit of loneliness in his face. I was also feeling a bit lonely myself. Koya. You know that letter? It's said to come visit tomorrow. I want to talk to you. It'll be a secret from your father, and all that. What'll you do? Right now, I still haven't decided. Koya said only that much, and hung his head. Whatever I do, it's probably going to be awkward. That's why I'm still thinking it over. Koya raised his head, looked up at the sky. Just... What's the best thing to do? Hey, what do you do, Dark? Or what would you do? Hmm? If it were me? For me, what would I do? If I were Koya? Uh, let's see. Go see her. If it were me, I'd go. After thinking about it, that would be my answer. Just as he said, it might turn out not to be that good a talk. But, on the other hand, it's possible the opposite is true. No. Nah, no one really knows what will happen. It's true, after all. The future still isn't decided yet. As for the choices that weren't picked, you can't go back and choose them. But, as we live, I think it's something that can't be helped. So, if it were the one... If I were the one doing it, I wouldn't want to have regrets. I'd go, if it were me. Dark. Yeah, you're right. As Koya murmured, I felt I could see a uh, light shining in his eyes. Unless I'm delusional, I'm sure it was his determination. Thanks, Dark. Because of you, I remembered something important. Hmm? One of my favorite mottos. Where there's a will, there's a way. And so, Koya laughed. I felt that like I hadn't seen that smile in forever. It's only been a few hours, too. It's a feeling I've missed. I'll go meet her, just like he said. Whatever happens, I won't know until I try. If I don't try, nothing will happen. Koya stood up. That figure somehow looked bigger than usual. Alright, shall we head back? Even it's the summer. If we stay out at night like this, we might catch a cold. Yeah, that's true. After entering back, I also began to stand up. Seeing this, Koya extended a hand from, uh, from above. Here, Dark. Thanks, Koya. I took his hand and pulled myself up to, next to him. If someone saw the end uh, from the end of the street, it looked like a handshake. Hey, Dark? Koya began to talk while we stayed that way. Hmm? Thanks. A lot. After saying that, Koya turned his embarrassed face away and walked along, still holding my hand. What? It... a second? I thought of saying it, but I stopped. When I saw Koya's tail uh, wagging like that, I somehow lost the will to speak, and occasionally, this sort of thing isn't too bad. Dark? What? Thanks for coming out to meet me. Yeah. <sighs> A long and emotional episode. Oh, jeez. 
So, anyways, uh, we're gonna end it here. If you want to play this game, you can go down to the link in the description where you can download and play this game free. And I do want to note that, um... I know that, uh, I definitely know that I'll be censoring, you know, the age stuff that comes along, but I might also just kind of skip over it because YouTube's been really strict recently. So just keep that uh, in your head. In case you want to see it, you can, again, go down to LinkedIn in the description and play it. And with that, um, yeah, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please comment because I like comments. Tell me what you like, dislike, tips, tricks, otherwise. If you like my YouTube and want to help it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out other videos to help it grow. And please spay or, and or new to your animals to help control the pet population. And until next time, on another Let's Play by me, the Game of 6 of Mornatu, the original Koi's Root. See ya.